Hello, and welcome to Infovox.Terra. I am your host, Paul, bringing you the unfiltered truth that the High Lords of Terra are trying to hide from you, loyal viewers. Every day, here, live, from the VoxCast studio, in the Underhive. Before we get started with the show today, we are going to be putting on our Psyker-proof headgear. This is available from my store for just $299, and it is shown to protect against the toxic 9G signals that allow psychers, demons, and those ministorum bureaucrats to get a hold of your thoughts and steal them right out of your head. Now, I wanted to talk today about a subject near and dear to all of our hearts as human beings. This is, of course, the Emperor of Mankind, Big E, Jimmy Space, Praise be to his name. Now, the official story of the Emperor, according to the bureaucrats on Terra, is that the Emperor was created almost 50,000 years ago, when Earth's primitive shamans sensed the frightening power of the warp and its potential dangers to humanity. To stop it, they agreed to ritually self-sacrifice and be reborn as a single being capable of defending humanity from the expansive threats and thirsting gods of the universe. Which don't exist, by the way. Uh, I will get demonetized if, if, I, if I say anything about gods existing. Uh, they don't. There's no gods. The imperial truth is, is absolutely correct. Please don't demonetize me, VoxTube. So, to defend humanity from the non-gods, the emperor was created. And he spent the first 30 thousand years of human history confined to the shadows, influencing events from afar. Only in the 30th millennium, after humanity's crippling fall from grace, did he emerge on ancient Terra. He decided then that he would recreate humanity's glory. He reconquered Terra with the help of his custodies and his thunder warriors, genetically perfect super soldiers made in his image. Once he unified Terra, of course, at the cost of every one of his valiant Thunder Warriors' lives, he set out to reclaim the galaxy for humanity, its rightful owner. But, friends, I have done my own research, and there's a couple of problems with the so-called official story. First, we know that humanity was nearly wiped out by the abominable intelligence in the 25th millennium, when it was at the height of its power. Do you mean to tell me that even as humans were being slaughtered by the trillions, by the infernal soulless machines, that the Emperor never thought to himself, this would be a good time to step in? Why would he, why would he wait? It wasn't like he even emerged immediately after the AI was defeated. He spent thousands of years on Terra, not doing much of anything. He didn't even become a Terran warlord for the, until the 30th millennium. Why would he let humanity live in darkness for 5,000 years? And there's more problems. Pre-modern human civilization, when the Emperor was created, had at most 10 million humans on Terra. There were more people in my habitation block than there were on Terra when the Emperor was born. And this was before the Age of Strife, when psychers were impossibly rare. The odds that 10 million humans would have more than two psychers to draw on is basically zero. And even if there somehow were enough shamans to sacrifice themselves to be reborn as the emperor, that isn't how the warp works. Psychers, when they die, they just go into the warp. They don't come back. You don't get do-overs. That's not a thing. Dying is a one-way trip, even for psychers. The ancient Terran audio logs, the Podcastium Roganus, are clear. Ancient humans were basically monkeys. Sometimes the monkeys did DMT. There is nothing special about us. The Podcastium also states that we should eat something called elk meat. I don't know what it is, but it must surely be the secret to unlocking our human potential. I suspect that the Astartes are fed elk meat. So, you ask me, Paul, what is the hidden truth of the Emperor? What is the secret that the 
the, the bureaucrats and the high lords don't want you to know. Well, I'll tell you. Before humanity relied on the men of iron, the abominable intelligence, they relied on the men of stone. And the men of stone were silicon computers. They were computer chips. They couldn't think like a man, but they enhanced man's thinking. But before even the men of stone, there was something else. The men of gold. These were perfect humans, created to be leaders, visionaries, the best of humanity, engineered by humanity to become their perfect leaders. Of course, eventually the men of stone faded to history. The men of gold faded to history, and the men of stone rose, only to be replaced themselves by the men of iron. The emperor, I think, is just one of the men of gold who won the genetic lottery and was also a psyker. Or perhaps he was engineered to be a psyker. Think about it. The emperor himself said he wasn't a god. And he has all sorts of human flaws. He's petty. He's apathetic. He can be biased. He's a shitty dad. How could a demigod have so many flaws? Though, the Emperor is certainly more visionary and intelligent than other humans. What if, in the 20th millennia, when he and the other Perpetuals went to Moloch, he, with his giant ego, as humanity's greatest thing, decided to step into the warp, and while the warp granted him powers, it also exaggerated his natural tendency Surely, one of humanity's engineered leaders would love order and organization. But when the emperor emerged from the warp, his desires became exaggerated a thousandfold. Instead of being just a, one of humanity's many leaders, he decided he emerged and was the emperor of man and was divinely mandated to conquer all of humanity under his vision. That seems like something that the warp would absolutely do if the pinnacle of humankind stepped into it. So, think about it. This explains why, despite being perfect, he is still a terrible father figure to all of the Primarchs. It explains his weird fixation on gold. For, not, for someone who's not a god, he has a lot of gold armor, and he's 15 feet tall, and all his custodies also wear gold. And he also it, it explains his fixation with genetically engineering people. He genetically engineered the custodies, the Thunder Warriors, the Astartes, and the Primarchs, and he did them all in his image. This is exactly what you would expect from a man of gold. Someone who is basically still coping with the fact that he used to be the top dog in humanity and then got replaced by basically a nice CPU and probably some weird blockchain shit. So that, friends, is the horrible truth about the Emperor. He may be humanity's defender, but he is just a regular dude grown in a lab that just is left around from when humanity was run by men of gold. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to question everything the High Lords tell you. And be sure to join the Discord to talk about more 40k conspiracies and 40k generally. And pick up some merch at the merch store. Stay uh, free thinking, friends. Paul out.